Hey guys, this is Mixed View. My name is Matt. This is my beautiful view. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to set up your MacBook Pro with your Mbox to give you two separate headphone outputs, which can be handy if you're recording a guitarist or a singer, a Foley artist or somebody like that in the same room as you're in where you don't want speakers to be bleeding into the microphone. But as an audio engineer, you're definitely going to want to hear what's being recorded. So let's go inside and check it out. The first thing we're going to do is set our sound output to the headphones. And once they're selected, you can make sure that your sound is all the way up. And then open a session in Pro Tools. So we're going to open up Pro Tools into a new session if you're starting from scratch. Uh, I've already created a session so that we can save some time. We're going to go to Setup and Playback Engine. First things first, we're going to set this as Pro Tools Aggregate I.O. You may have some different options available to you. Uh, we're also going to set it at 128 samples, as high a processing rate as we can, and a short delay compensation engine. So the next step involves just setting up your uh, inputs and outputs, which is your I.O. So go up to Setup and then to I.O. Um, what I would suggest you do is just copy these settings that I have right here, because this whole thing could just be a tutorial in itself. So. Um, set up your outputs so that you have access to both the MacBook Pro speakers and headphones as well as your Mbox stereo outs. Um, I don't know anybody that uses the uh, SPDIF for home recording, but um, you might want to set that one up right now as well. And then next you're going to want to go in and set up these inputs so that you have access to all of your inputs also. For this session, we're going to use a previously bounced stereo song, uh, one microphone and a stereo auxiliary track for a headphone mix. So if you're not familiar with the shortcuts, you can go up to the track menu and press new. Then just click here to make a couple of different options. First things first, we're going to pick a stereo audio track. Secondly, a mono audio track. And thirdly, a stereo auxiliary input and just click create. Now I've taken the liberty of already naming our tracks. The first one's the song that we're going to put in here. The second one is the microphone we're going to be using to uh, record what the artist is saying over top of the song or rapping or singing. Um, and the third one is their headphone mix. So as far as the inputs, we're going to set the song as no input because it's just going to be a WAV file. Uh, we're going to put the output as output. Mbox stereo out. Then we're going to do the same thing for the mic, except for the input is going to be the interface. On mine, I have it in the right channel. And the output as well is going to be the Mbox. Now, thirdly, we're going to put the uh, headphone mix as a bus. So in this case, we're going to select headphone mix because I've already named my bus. So you can select any one that you want and then name it accordingly. Um, the output, we're just going to put it as the uh, stereo left right MacBook Pro speakers headphones. That's really important. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is set up our sends. All we have to do is click on each of these ones, go to the output, we're going to select bus, and we're going to choose that headphone mix. And then do the same thing for this one. and make sure that these are set to pre-fader. Now that's gonna make sure that we can give him his own volume level without restricting ourselves to only listening at that volume as well. Um, it also makes a lot of sense when you go to this view here because you can control our volumes right here without changing his volume and we can control his volume right here. Now what I'm gonna do is drag in the song that we're gonna uses our backing track so just gonna go to the finder just find the song that we want and then just drag it into the session so once it's in there I just line it up with the front of the track perfect so the last thing that we're gonna do is go over to the mbox software mixer and just make sure that these two are muted mine's not because I'm recording into a screen capture the software returns are not muted and they're both panned left and right so you're hearing the full stereo image um, and then I also tend to pan mine right up the middle from the inputs so that you can hear the mic or the guitar or whatever it is going directly to the headphones in the center rather than on one side or the other 
Uh, and once you're done with that, you can close it. Take a second right now just to take a look at the settings and set yours up appropriately. Then what we can do is start mixing our song into the headphones. So if we raise this up right here, the artist is going to be getting some into his headphone mix. It's going through the bus. And then for the mic, we're probably going to want to raise this up quite a bit so that they can hear themselves. Now, because we set such a low latency, we're not going to be able to put many effects on here for the artist to hear. But typically when they're recording, it's not for a whole effect production. It's just to get a good take. If they need some comfort reverb, you can also add that into the track through the inserts. But other than that, you're pretty well good to go. So anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe if you like the video and you want to see more of these. And uh, comment below if you know any way that we can set it up more efficiently or if you have ways that we can expand on it. And have a great day, guys.